It was a hot, humid Thursday night, July 7th, as the USAC Sprint Cars returned to pavement competition for the first time since 1981. Rich Vogler tried the low groove as the race fans saw three abreast competition. There was plenty of tire abuse as the drivers smoked the right rear. Vogler and Steve Butler would get together several times this evening, but the altercation that would set the stage for the finish had Andy Hillenberg loose in turn one with Butler sliding in front of Vogler. The contact would send Butler to the back of the pack and send Vogler to the sideline. Butler would work his way back through traffic to take second place, a distant second to Bob Fry, who would win in the V6 Chevrolet. ESPN, the world's leader in motorsports coverage, presents Speed World. Tonight, live from Indianapolis Raceway Park, it's the Hardy's Racing Series featuring the USAC Switzer Candy Sprint Cars. Brought to you by Goodyear Eagle Tires. Goodyear, because there really is a difference. And by Quaker State Motor Oil. The big Q stands for quality. Always has, always will. It was another hot and humid day here in central Indiana. We have clear skies, still very warm, 85 degrees. Light winds, 42% the humidity, and we have no chance of rain. The competition, as we expected, very fast. A new track record, we think. Hi, I'm Gary Lee. Once again, alongside of Steve Chassie, we say we think there is some controversy. Well, we have possibly a track record. It's either Gene Lee Gibson or it's Steve Butler. They're both under the existing track record. And the reason for it is because they've had three weeks to work on their cars on pavement. Now they're fine-tuning them, and we've seen some real fast racing. Steve Chassie, Brian Hammonds, and Gary Lee back live at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Now, you have seen the fourth and final heat race, the last chance race. We're getting ready now for our 30-lap main event. What you didn't see were the first three heat races, so we'll go back and now them. that there may be a problem on the racetrack. Steve Butler, the two-time defending USAC Sprint Car champion, was signaling to one of the... USAC officials down the front straightaway that somebody may have been dropping some oil. Uh, I see a lot of yellow shirts involved down there, and uh, the yellow shirts could mean Bob Fry. Now, Bob's starting just in front of uh, Steve Butler. Well, you know, that V6 Chevy may have a little leak. There's a look at Steve Butler, and we'll take a look as they come down the main straightaway. This time we saw no signal. Nothing at all. Cars are lined up, and apparently if we don't have a problem, we should have the green flag the next a dirt car competition. He has been on pavement in a dirt car. However, this is like the second time on pavement in a sprint car. He starts inside row one. Kevin Huntley starts outside the front row in car 69. Jeff Bloom and Bob Fry, seven in car 20, starting in the second row. Row three, Steve Butler and Gene Lee Gibson, the fast qualifier. In the fourth row, Billy Vukovic, the third, and Mark Alderson. In row five, on the inside, Leon Thixton. Outside, Rich Vogler. Looky here, who holds the track record for 30 laps? Steve Chassis, set back in 1980, with all that added weight that you added that roadster that year, at 11 minutes, 34, and 84, 100 seconds. Recall that feature? I sure do. I uh, remember the guy who ran right behind me, too, is Rich Vogler. I just got by him, like, a lap from the end. Here we come for a start. Racing, right? yes, we are. The green flag is out. The contest is underway in Indianapolis Raceway Park. Well, let's see if you're correct, Steve, as they come off the corner and see who leads the parade down the back straightaway. Looks like I was right. Kevin Huntley's gotten off to a nice lead. Stop rides in second position, but there goes Steve Butler. Down to the inside, left side tire in the grass. He's got that uh, grass move down pat. He does it every race, every lap. If you ever go golfing with him, don't let him drive the golf cart. <laughs> Great shot down the front straightaway into turn one, now to turn two. Kevin Huntley still leads. A bit of a gap between first and second, but Butler rides in second position. What will Steve Butler do on the restart? He's going to trim the grass down in, the, in turn three. <laughs> And I, I have a feeling he's going to come off leading this race after one lap. Well, he likes the pavement. There's a look at Bob Fry, the V6. Steve Butler, in the red number one, loves the pavement. And like I said earlier, this is only his eighth time on pavement. In seven outings, he finished in the top three six times. He's going to follow him now, and he's going to get close to him coming off a of two. And then I think he's going to make his famous patented uh, grass-cutting move in, in turn three. <laughs> Maybe you should get a sponsor like somebody that sells them off. There it is. There it right is. Down, down the inside, grass. Gene Lee tries to follow suit. Can't Good. get the job done, and he could not hold the momentum down there. Slides up behind your leader. Kevin Huntley continues to lead the race in car 69. And there's the battle for third position. 
Staub is third right now in the white 44. The black number three is Gene Lee Gibson, your fast qualifier. This is Staub's best showing that I think I've seen him on the pavement. He's done a real good job tonight. A look now at the first five as they work into turn four off the corner down the main straightaway. They complete lap number four. Four laps down and 26 laps to go. We have four cars, five cars contesting three positions, actually. The leader is basically got to control the race, but the other cars are all fighting for their own spot, and they Gene all want Lee the same slides spot. just a bit. He tried again to get in low and get in under stop. But he had to roll out the throttle because he was sliding high on the racetrack. He just can't stick like, like Steve Butler can. Well, Butler is down to the infield grass. That was the first turn. That was the first time I've seen the first turn. I think he's going to wait for the third turn and, and uh, trim the grass and make the pass. Well, he, look at him fight that steering wheel. He's working hard in the cockpit. He has it, though. There it is. That was a, that was a tight one. Now, Greg tight. Staub has been watching from third position. Did he learn something? Will Greg Staub try it down low, or is he set up bottom? Well, the status quo, yes, still up in front. Number one, Steve Butler, and there's the battle for second, third, fourth, and fifth. Right now, for Bob Fry to have a chance at victory, I would think he would need a yellow flag, because right now, Steve Butler is way out in front in number one, but he's going to be catching traffic in the next couple of laps. He's a full straightaway ahead right now. Well, this time by, they will have completed 20 laps. They'll have 10 laps to go is in heavy traffic. There is the gap closing down. There's a look at your leader. The red number one, the Stoops Express car, that is Steve Butler. He goes around one car. Oh, oh. probably lost the right rear. The leader lost the right rear. That could have been very, very dangerous. Very dangerous. It, it, it's just very fortunate that he was, was far enough away from the fence when it did come around. The car came all the way around, and then it went down to the inside rather than staying up top. You race drivers sometimes act like you have ice water in the veins, nerves of steel, but I gotta tell you right now, his stomach is up in his throat. Well, you know, actually, it, when things happen like that, they happen so fast, you don't have time to have your, your stomach go up in your hey, throat. When you're spinning around like this and cars are coming at you, you got time to think about it. Here comes the replay. Watch this. You see the sparks fly as the right rear goes. Oh yeah, it, it came off early. It looks to me like the wheel came out. The wheel center is still on the right rear. See the wheel center right there? And there's the wheel. The other part of the wheel came loose from the tire. It broke the wheel right off. And that had to be a wild ride for uh, Harrison there at number 44. He had nowhere to go and watch him fight the wheel. Watch David at number 44 fight this wheel, trying to maintain control. He has no place to go. Watch the spark. See, it just pop came off. Now it's on, it's on aluminum and just so lucky that it didn't really get in the fence and get upside down. And Harrison is on the binders very, very hard, hanging on. Excellent job. Did an excellent job of missing that whole melee. Look, at he's going to go right on through. I think you're looking at two very lucky drivers right there because that could have been very, very serious. A good shot of Steve Butler now alone in the cockpit, kind of to, uh, trying to pontificate what is going on. Well, there's the action right now over on the backstretch as Steve Butler, your defending USAC Sprint Car Champion, is on the hook. We were trying to assess the damage to the front end to see if perhaps they could stick a new wheel on there and he'd go back out. He's done that before in his career. He, he did it here. Uh, well, he didn't put a new wheel on, but he, but he spun here and came back to run second. I had a thought about that wheel breaking. They just ran Salem, which is, is a high bank racetrack, and it puts a lot of pressure on the wheel. And this could have happened because of running Salem with this, they're a two inch offset wheel. All of a sudden you see the sparks drop. Now it's on just the center of the wheel. And the car comes around. Fortunately, it does not make contact with the fence and continues right on around to the infield. And Harrison did a good job of missing him. So I'd say we're very fortunate with this incident. Well, I know before in his racing career, one time back in 1981, in a race that I was racing with him at Lawrenceburg, he got upside down not once, but twice in the feature. So he was able to roll the car back over the first time, climb back in and got pushed away without damage. <laughs> but he got upside down the second time and that took we care of him. They are going to work on the car because he stays in the cockpit. They're going to try to get him back out. What they said in the driver's meeting was they'll give you three laps. If you're in here and you're working on your car, they'll give you three laps to work on your car. So now they've used one lap. They have to get it done in two laps to get back pushed out and start the race. Well, the crew goes to work. Butler stays in the car, so he's had a chance to uh, slow the heartbeat down just a little bit. And Brian Hammonds is standing by in the pit area. Steve Butler, what happened? I don't know. The wheel, I think the wheel broke. Can you get it fixed? 
Yeah, I think the pitcher do went on, but the, the wheel just fell off coming out of the turn. I think it broke. You were running away and hiding from him. Oh, man, I wanted to win that so bad, Brian. It's really a disappointment, bud. All right, the car is now down off the jacks, and Steve Butler's getting ready to get back in this race. Gary? Uh, I talked to Steve earlier. He said he'd made some adjustments to the front of the car, and he thought the front was too stiff, so he put the axle back, which actually makes the torsion arms longer, which softens the spring rate up because it was pushing too much before, and it apparently worked tonight. They have a designated push-off area. They have to get him down to that area to get the car pushed away. You know, maybe they're just going to push him from right there because... Uh, the indication has been given. We have one more lap before we go green. So they're trying to get uh, Steve Butler away and talk about a kamikaze drive now. I'm a fan of Steve Butler's, and he will put on a show for these fans here at Raceway Park. They won't need to mow the grass for a week. <laughs> at least the first few inches off the pavement. Now there is, there is Butler down the back stretch. He'll rejoin the pack at the back. And there the green flag flies. We are racing, and Butler goes to work immediately passing cars. Hey, he already picked up two or three spots. Let's see what Bob... Uh, there's a look at uh, number 52, Mark Alderson. There is Butler cutting grass. Yeah, cutting grass. Just got by Vogler. And the next one up in his line is Little Vukovic. Little Vukovic. Little Vuk. Down the main straightaway. Butler will never, ever give up till the checkered flag falls, and he's going to get Vuk. Maybe two cars. He pulls alongside number seven. Cannot get Bloom, but he gets by Vukovic. See how much how much he gains oh. in the corner. And then look at this. There's a little grass cut. <laughs> oh, we've got a battle for the lead. There goes Tom, smoking that right rear, coming down to complete lap 24. Six laps to go. We talked earlier about the competition this evening. What a position to be in. Leading this race, knowing these guys are on your heels like this, it's a tough job. Bill Vukovic is trying. Butler's to... already around. Bloom. Would you believe that Butler is up to third position? Butler is up to third. There's fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, and it looks like Vogler almost got together with Mark Alderson. Alderson, the white number 52. There goes, oh, Vogler's losing his hood. Vogler has a loose hood. He's driving one hand and then hanging on with the left yeah. hand. Yeah. That's like back in the old days when you had to pump the brake. He's driving with one hand hanging on to the hood. That could prompt a yellow and give Steve Butler a chance. Butler's back up to third. He's going to finish the top third again. What a pass. What a pass. It's tire smoke and he still got by. And we have a new leader. Greg yes. Stav is out in front. It could be his first ever pavement victory. And here he comes trying to get back by. Oh, and now he has a gap between first and second. 27 laps complete. What a and big lead. Butler is closing in. If they have a yellow, if they have a yellow, Butler will have a shot. He's back up to third. Two laps to go. Greg Stop having perhaps the best ride of his long career. And I can, I can tell you, you will never, ever see a happier victor than you're going to see in Greg Stop when he pulls that helmet off. There is the white flag. One lap to go. Can you imagine all the things he's hearing right now? I know he's driving as hard as he can. I'm sure he's also numb right now as well. Oh, yeah. Off the second corner down the back stretch. You Great stop, and there is a battle back in the pack. There is Vogler again trying to work on Billy Vukovic, the third. You never know how these races are going to end at this Gene race. Lee track. Gibson making a nice drive through traffic. There is There's the checkered flag. The crew is ecstatic in the pit area. Oh, the first ever pavement victory for Greg Stobb out of the Lawrenceburg, Indiana, Cincinnati, Ohio area. A perennial favorite and perennial champion at the Lawrenceburg Speedway, which is a quarter-mile high bank dirt track. But I tell you, he has very, very little experience on pavement, but boy, he was sharp tonight. Another happy guy will be Tom Stenger. <laughs> Tom's been behind him for a long time. Right, look at him wave to the crew as he goes by. He might take three or four cool down He's laps to stay out there and savor the victory. That has to be one of the greatest moments of any driver's career after he wins that last lap, the cool down lap. Look at the tire hops. See when they slow down, they pick up rubber and they become out of balance real bad. And that's from that slow lap, picked up all that rubber and they're hopping around. We talked earlier about that phenomenal record on pavement for Steve Butler. This is his eighth time on pavement in his career and the seventh time he has finished third. And look at the jubilation of the cockpit. <laughs> Keep at least one hand on the wheel, Greg. He's oh, excited. you can see the smiling eyes. There is the crew. They're ecstatic. And we're going to come back and talk to him, and I can tell you how happy he is right now. Greg Stobb, his first ever pavement victory, it came tonight at Indianapolis Raceway Park.